Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA semester 2, Routing and Switching Essentials. This is chapter 7, Routing Dynamically. And section 7.2, Distance Vector Dynamic Routing. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to describe the process by which distance vector routing protocols learn about other networks and be able to identify the types of distance vector routing protocols. Distance vector routing protocols, they do share updates between the neighbors, so it's uh, link state routing protocols, so they share updates between, routing between the neighbors. They are not aware of the net network topology, so the problem with the distance vector routing protocol is because they just learn about the direction and how far it is, they really have got no idea of the network it actually exists to get there and then they suffer from the routing loops. So we have to implement some other uh, technologies to prevent that loop, routing loops. They, some of them they do send periodic updates to broadcast IP address 255, 255, 255, 255, even if topology has not been changed. For example, RIV version 1 and IGRP, they do send the broadcast updates. It is a problem because everybody's going to get it, or even the mobile phones, even the IP phones, and if anything on the network is going to get that update. And every 30 seconds, for example, RIV version 1 will send an update every 30 seconds. So it's version 2, but at least version 2 does not send as a broadcast. So RIV version 1 and IGRP, they do send it as a broadcast, while RIV version 2 and EIGRP, they do send an update as a multicast. Updates, they consume bandwidth and network device vCPU resources. RIV version 2 and EIGRP, they use a multicast address for these updates. EIGRP will only send an update when topology has changed, so it's like a trigger update. So the algorithm they both use, RIV version 1 uses an algorithm called Bellman Ford, and EIGRP and IGRP, they use a Cisco developed algorithm called Diffusing Update Algorithm, or Jewel for short. Okay, this slide is very important that you do understand everything that's ha showing on this slide and maybe take a notes and whatever, print screen or whatever you want with these slides. But let's look at the on the left here. Uh, this is about RIP, version 1 and version 2, routine information protocol. They do send an update. Routine updates, they are broadcasted every 30 seconds. So every 30 seconds, both of these protocols, they send the routine update. RIP version 1 will send a, as a broad, the broadcast IP address version 2 will send it to a multicast IP address but every 30 seconds even if nothing has changed we're going to send it so imagine every 30 seconds your printer is getting a bunch of routing protocols a bunch of routing updates so what your printer is going to do with that nothing it's going to just ignore it is you are wasting the printer's uh, power the bandwidth and CPU resources and so on because they have to read these updates and rip sends it every 30 seconds at least version 2 sends it to the multicast address. Only RIP speaking routers will hear that. Both of them, they do send an update to as a unreliable, so there's no reliability, there's no like, oh, acknowledgement, uh, to the port number 520, 520. RIP NG is based on RIP version 2, and it uses a 15 hop limitation and the administrative distance of 120. If you remember, the administrative distance was the trustworthiness. So 120 for both NG and RIP version 2. Trustworthiness, for example, imagine that you're learning about destination from two sources. One who speaks EIGRP and the other one who speaks RIP. And who are you going to believe? EIGRP or RIP? Well, EIGRP has by default a better administrative distance or lower administrative distance than RIP. So you believe EIGRP. So RIP version 1 and RIP version 2, both of them, they use a hop count as a simple metric. Now, if you were watching this video in the order, in, in section 7.1, we talked about, for example, RIP was using a uh, modem speed to the destination, was using the link that has a modem speed to get to the destination, rather than use a broadband speed, a link that has a broadband speed to get to the destination. The only reason why it wasn't choosing broadband speed was because it had more hops, and uh, modem speed has a, had a one hop only, so it was choosing that. That's the problem. So, for example, other protocols that use they take into account the bandwidth which is very important and both of them they have the maximum number of hops 15 so 15 to the destination is the maximum 
Rip version 1 will broadcast the updates to that address, while Rip version 2 will multicast the updates to 224009. Uh, version 1 does not support VLSM, variable length subnet mask, because it doesn't send the subnet mask within update. Rip version 2 does send the subnet mask. Classless into domain routing, version 1 doesn't support, version 2 does support it. Summarization not for 1, version 2 yes, and secure is authentication, version 1 doesn't support it, while well, version 2 does. So that's all about the RIP version, RIP routing information protocol. Uh, pretty much any exam questions are going to roll around this slide, you know, they're going to ask you a UDP port number or how many seconds before we send an update and so on. Important slides. The next one is EIGIP. Now EIGIP, Enhanced Interior Gateway Routing Protocol. So uh, here we can compare IGIP, which is legacy, pretty much none of the devices have it or use it. You're gonna have a hard time finding a device that actually does support IGIP. Okay, let's go through this on the right. So EIGIP is bounded, triggered update. Only when there's a change, it sends an update rather than every 30 seconds. So when there's a change, it sends an update and only to those devices or those neighbors who need to know about that update. It does use a hello keep alive, uh, keep alive mechanism. So EIGIP will use a hello to establish the neighbors and continue to maintain that those neighbors are there. We use a hello. This does maintain a topology table. So EIGIP will learn about each route from the neighbors and it will add them to the topology table and then pick the best route from that topology table and add it, uh, give it to the routing table. It, this supports a rapid convergence. So if you remember what what was the convergence, what did it stand for? Conversion was when all routers have a complete and accurate information about the network. It's a multiple network layer protocol. So metric for EIGIP and IGIP, it's the both use a, a composite metric, which is uh, consists of the bandwidth and delay. Now, the reliability and load can be added if, if you want, but it's not recommended because it, they do increase uh, the processing needs for the router. Forward updates for IGRP is a broadcast and for EIGRP is 2240010. Now if you compare to RIP it was 2240009. How do you remember these two numbers are so close to each other on when you have a pressure an exam or a job interview or anything? 2240010 uh, think of it 10 is uh, A on hex and A think of it, it stands for advanced Root advanced distance vector protocol, which is EIGIP. EIGIP is a dis advanced distance vector within protocol. So A, 10, 224010. Maybe that will help. I don't know. The VLSM is not supported on IGIP. EIGIP is supported. And same classless into domain routing and summarization on EIGIP, yes. What and authentication? Thank you very much for watching this section 7.2 distance vector routing dynamic routing please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe this has been astri krasnichi and next video is 7.3 rip and rip ng routing well we're going to configure the routine bye bye